All right, so we actually have a part three to this 04 Volkswagen Phaeton. So you saw the teardown video, which is part one, part two was doing the valve body with the shift kit, the solenoids and the plate and everything. And transmission went back together, back in the car, oiled it up, lifeguard six, no problems, everything went very smooth. Uh, we took it on a road test, you know, didn't really care for the way it's shifting. And you know, you have to usually with these six speeds, the ZF units reset the adapts. And, and what I found in actually speaking to somebody about it, when you got an Audi or a Volkswagen, the, you, you really have to reset the adapts. Meaning they kind of only go one way. And once the transmission is done, you can drive the, drive the car and it may not work itself out. BMWs, I believe, kind of would go both ways and, and, and work themselves out over time, but, but um, Volkswagens and Audis seems that the ship adapts have to be reset, which is typical that you would have to do anyway after you overhaul one of these. So we bring, bring it back into the shop and my lead mechanic who works on this side was, was unbelievable. I mean, the stuff that we did to this car with wiring and, and start authorization module and he totally rewired that module i think there's i don't know maybe 80 wires but um we hooked the scan tool up to it uh i do a code scan you know just to make sure what i just see scan all the modules and it goes from usually we go engine transmission abs airbag and and down the line and it skipped right over transmission I have the I have the snap on Apollo, so my my uh, uh, mechanic, my head mechanic here, who mainly, pretty much his job is for diagnosing and road testing and stuff like that. He does do work when there is uh, no diagnosing or road testing to do, but that's mainly why he's here. And he has his own Autel, so I asked him to put the Autel on, do a code scan, see what comes up with, because when you have a situation like this. I like to try more than one scan tool just to make sure. I even have my Ross Tech and, and uh, uh, it wouldn't communicate either. So he puts it on, he goes, no, nah, skip right over transmission. So we get out of the code scan and we go directly to transmission and we have no communication. But the car is working fine, the Prindle is working, it's upshifting, it's downshifting. And it's strange that you can't communicate with the, with the transmission. And there's really no codes in any of the modules. So I said, let's try this. Let's disconnect the harness, you know, at the transmission, unplug the transmission so it's totally offline, and let's do a code scan again. So we did that, and now we're getting codes, communication codes that the other modules can't speak to the transmission control module with it unplugged. We plug it back in, clear the codes, code scan again, the codes do not come back. So the scenario that we have here is the transmission control module is speaking to the other modules, but it is not communicating with our scan tool, any scan tool, even the Ross Tech, it did not communicate. So the way the Gary is, his name is Gary also, um, he's, you know, once he has a challenge, he's determined to fix it. So of course we got to check the communication lines and he's got breakout boxes and stuff and all kinds of stuff to, to look at this. Um, and he even found a wiring diagram. I went on Pro Demand to see what I could find wiring. There's nothing on this particular car. But he did some kind of research and also the owner of the car had sent us a manual uh, to my phone and I sent it to him. And I believe that may have had wiring in it. But also he found it on, some, on, some, uh, on a site. It might have been Identifix, I'm not sure. Uh, then he started looking at the communication line. So you have the CAN bus lines where the computers talk to each other. And then you have the K line, which is a wire that uh, I guess would go to maybe to like the uh, OBD2 connector or the ALDL and speak to the, the uh, 
go through the, the um, scan tool. So we did those tests already and now we got to determine whether we have a problem with the TCM or if we have a wiring problem. So he checked the wire uh, with his voltmeter, you know, with the key on, and you can see the voltage was jumping around like it maybe was trying to communicate. So we figured the wire was good, and he did an end-to-end -end check, and that seemed okay. He put a load on, it seemed okay. We dropped the pan, and this is your harness. So he identified, you know, we unplugged it from here, and we pulled that off, so the transmission was totally offline. And then once we knew the wire was good on the outside, we checked the wire on the inside uh, up to here. You know, I unplugged this and, and he did his thing and he says, the wire seems good. He said, it's gotta be a problem within the transmission control module. So I said, well, you know, what am I gonna do here? So my contact in Europe, Bulgaria, Soft Electronics, uh, I emailed I have an email of, of the guy that I speak to there and told him the scenario. He says, well, plug something, another one in and see if anything changes. But, you know, I called around. I couldn't get another Volkswagen uh, TCM to uh, as a test. I, I called ZF people and stuff. Nobody had it. Stuff's not that easy to come by. So I said, the only option here is, I, call, I, I emailed him back. I, I emailed this guy like at, like at four in the morning because of the time difference. And I had said to him, I can't get one. I have to send this to you to be checked. You know, the wiring seems okay. I need you to check it with your equipment and let me know if this thing is going to be bad so I know what I have to do. So I got permission from the client to do that. Uh, they sent the labels, the customs form, the manifest, everything. DHL picked it up and they got it maybe like four days later. And I get an email from him and he said, and it, it's no communication with the scan tool is permanent. But again, it's communicating with the other modules. That's what I explained to him. So I sent him the TCM and I sent him the harness and I said, let me know what you come up with so I know, you know, what direction to go. And he emailed me back. And he said, there indeed is no communication with this TCM. This problem is not fixable. And there is an issue with the hardware that, that we, can't, we can't fix. It has to be replaced. So he says, we have them here and we can clone it. We can clone yours to another one and ship it back to you. So I got permission to do that. And again, I got my... Uh, package from Soft Electronics. These guys are great. They sent me back the harness and they sent me back a clone TCM. And I guess what they do is they take the information out of the TCM and load it into another one. Now again, you know, this, this was communicating with other modules, but just not with the scan tool. So these guys got like state-of-the-art equipment. I'm not really sure how they do this, but they said they take the information out and they put it into the into the this one uh, uh, clone it. So we got we got to get the car back inside and put this back together. So uh, these guys from Soft Electronics, you know, again came to the rescue, and they also were able to once they clone this, they were able to reset the shift adapts on the TCM. Now, when I put this back in the car, this transmission should be online and I should be able to get into it now with my scan tool. I can always reset the adapts myself, but again, with Volkswagen and Audi, uh, they, they won't, we don't, I don't believe they would work it themselves out, you know, uh, uh, with these six speeds. I, I believe it has to be reset. So what I want to do now is uh, I just want to make a video to uh, let you guys know what's going on and uh, we're going to go ahead and install the TCM back onto the valve body and probably sometime during the week we're going to get this thing back in, get it oiled up, road checked, uh, um, make sure the adapts are reset and drive it out until uh, we, got some, uh, we got some decent shifts. Uh, not so bad on the upshifts and downshifts, I didn't really care for a little bit firm on the downshifts. 
but all that should be good to go now. So I'm gonna get a little closer and we'll put this back on and just wanted to make a, a quick video about this, so I will be right back. All right, so let's go ahead and install this DCM. So we have our manual valve here. That's moving nice. And we're gonna hook that up to this one right here. Right, so we'll line up the dowels. Should go right on. So we have our six bolts. We have one really long one. I think that goes here. Yes. Okay, and then the rest. Okay. That's just very gently these down. Okay, manual valve still moving good. Five inch pounds. Okay. All right, then we have our harness. We'll just go ahead and plug right in. So come out the front and we're good to go. So we're going to be putting this back in the car and then I will let you guys know how everything worked out but I'm really not anticipating any problems. Uh, again this is an 04 Volkswagen Phaeton ZF6HP19A and we got a clone TCM uh, from Soft Electronics. Here's their uh, box. And these guys are in Bulgaria, and, and you can contact them by email. My contact is George. Uh, the guy's great. Um, but you just got to do it. You know, I do it very early in the morning because of the time difference. I think when I'm coming in to work, you know, our day starts at 8, 9 o'clock, they're just going home. And uh, they, he usually gets back to me, you know, not a problem. And it's uh, been good. I've used them probably about, I've shipped them probably about a dozen things uh, to repair and had very good luck with it. So, all right. I thank you guys for watching. Have a great day. And we'll see you next one.